Skibidi Titans vs. The Real World Army A very interesting video by Unique Cameraman. Since I'm the host in today's episode, I invited Unique Camera to explain everything, including behind the scenes. I will also be asking some questions about the video and will do a full recap of anything you might have missed. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Did you ever wonder if the Titans in Skibidi Toilet could defeat the real-world army? How would they fare against modern weaponry, fighter jets, tanks, bombs, or even missiles? Well, in order to answer that, I split the army's power into five different levels. With each new level, the army would get a huge increase in power. So, let's first see how many levels each Titan could pass on their own. And at the end of the video, we will see what would happen if all of the Titans fought the army together. For example, in the first level, the Camera Titan would face off against a group of armed soldiers with modern weapons and armor. Considering the fact that the Titans are very durable, due to the mechanisms used to create them being quite tough, the Camera Titan would take zero damage from basic guns. However, rockets would be quite different, as there would be many soldiers launching from different angles. Even so, I think the Camera Titan's durability would still hold up, and since he's much larger than them, a basic blast from the camera would cause serious damage. With multiple shots, he would clear the soldiers quickly. So, unique camera. You talked about the Camera Titan defeating the first level of soldiers with rockets. What do you think about this? Unique TV. Yeah, of course. The Camera Titan is extremely durable, and petty attacks like those wouldn't damage him at all. The regular soldiers are getting cooked easily. I mean, we're talking about someone who survived the acid kamikaze with crazy battle feats. So yeah, be it rocket launchers or guns, the camera easily clears it. Basically, just like I said, some people with launchers might pose a problem just like Leo did, since there are multiple of them. Hmm, I don't know. Even while making the video, it was really a tough one. But overall, I think he clears this round. Okay, let's agree with that. Realizing that the threat is much stronger than expected, the army would add a second wanted level to the Camera Titan, which means they would send tanks, choppers, and fighter jets. Would this be enough to bring our Camera Titan down? Although the damage done to the Camera Titan would be much more fatal, I still think he would be able to handle it. With the help of his shield, he would be able to block some dangerous weapons and attacks. Using his gravity arm, the helicopters would be taken care of, just like we've seen in the series. The jets would probably be a nuisance due to their speed and mobility, but in time, the Camera Titan would try to take them out. He would have to resort to using his most powerful attack since the damage he would take in the process would be significant. Okay, the first two levels were a bit tricky for the Camera Titan and kind of difficult too, but the next one would be where everything gets much harder. Now, the army would use biotechnology for extra attacks and the other weaponry and technology would also be used in a much more advanced way. This means that some jets would be able to shoot acids and the operation would be oh on a boy. very large scale. Oh boy, the camera so gets yeah, cooked at this titan point. Would be no escaping it. Danger. Although the Camera Titan could theoretically block some attacks with his energy shield, it would only be a matter of time before... But do you guys think that the army would be able to break the Camera Titan's shield? Because for me, the one in the multiverse is just on another level. But what do you guys think? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's not like it is indestructible or something. Even the Kamikaze in the original series did it quite well, so multiple of them would do the job perfectly. Yeah, that's plausible. The jets could drop missiles on him, and despite his size, it would be hard to track the aircraft's movements, as they could also fly much higher than his height. After doing research, it seems they could go as high as about 50,000 feet, which is well above the Camera Titan's reach. Additionally, if the army goes extreme, they could use some of the aircraft as kamikazes, and with this method, they would likely take down the Camera Titan quickly. However, giving some credit to our Camera Titan, he would probably take out most of the regular jets, but his fate remains the same. Although the Camera Titan managed to get to level 3, this is still only a very small chunk of the army's full strength. Let's all agree that the Camera Titan could clear only three levels of the army, but now let's see how the speaker would perform. Are there any of the remaining Titans that can make the army go all out? Let's find out. When it comes to the speaker Titan, the first level would be kind of easy for him. Due to the way he fights, he would quickly take down the normal soldiers. Also, just like the Camera Titan, normal gunshots wouldn't do any damage, and due to his crazy agility, he would be able to dodge some rocket blasts. Okay, the first level was obviously easy, but how about the second one? Although this would be harder than the last one, the speaker Titan could just squash the tanks with his foot and also fly up to destroy the others. But, as I mentioned, there are multiple versions of the these things, and with numbers, they would be able to land some attacks and do serious damage. However, the Speaker Titan could just ram into all of them. And hey, I also added his supercharged state, so you know he's taking this one. On the third level, Titan Speaker Man suffers the same fate as Titan Cameraman. Despite the skills he has demonstrated so far, I'm not seeing him survive multiple acid rockets. Although he might try doing what he did in Episode 70 or even use intense sound waves, this wouldn't be enough to stop the army. To make matters worse, it would take all his stored energy, which also means 
means that in no time, the Speaker Titan would meet his end. Well, with what we've seen, the two Titans were not able to pass the third level. Do you guys have anything to say about that? Honestly, I think the Speaker Titan would have more chances. Not that he's stronger than the camera or anything, but with his insane agility and movement speed, he's mostly gonna dodge most of them. If his sound waves are potent enough, he could basically make enough vibrations to make the jets lose control even before the rockets are launched. Yeah, to me, I honestly think the Speaker Titan stands more chances than the camera, but like I said, his fate would remain the same. Okay, so far no one has been able to pass the third level, and I already feel bad because I really wanted you all to see what's in the other levels. But hey, maybe Jimmy could do it using his ultimate technique. Okay guys, it's like we have Jimmy with the plot armor on this one. Hmm, what can he do? Let's find out. I assume you all already know, right? Anyways, in the first level, G-Man would pass it easily. Utilizing his lasers, the soldiers sent to attack him would be completely overpowered. The second level would be a breeze as well. While he could protect himself from their attacks using his shield, his lasers would do the offensive job for him. The flying jets would be tricky due to their speed, and Jimmy wouldn't be able to keep up to hit them. Even his lasers, which are decently fast, would at most only take out a few of them while shooting randomly. Overall, I'm not seeing any side winning this one as the soldiers wouldn't damage G man and Jimmy wouldn't be able to destroy all the fighter jets, so I'll call it a draw. But before you come at me, if you know any way either side could win, let me know in the comments. But let's say Jimmy did manage to pass the second level and proceed to the third. How would it play out? Well, as explained, all the army's battle power would be at full potential, and they would also use acids. But what if I told you that G-Man would actually be the first one to pass this stage? Hear me out. If you look at the structure of Jimmy's shield, you would notice that it covers him very well compared to the others. And that is obviously due to his body structure too. This means most blasts of rockets and missiles wouldn't randomly hit him. However, his shield isn't impenetrable, and with a decent amount of blasts, it would most likely deactivate. However, from what we've seen, Jimmy could always reactivate his shield. Honestly, do you all think that Jimmy's shield is that durable? Like we saw how the Astros were able to deactivate it with a decent amount of firepower. Well, I'd like to hear your opinions. To be honest, I don't think Jimmy's shield is different from the cameras when it comes to durability. The only thing I was trying to point out is that his structure would help defend him far better than usual. Okay guys, let's say Jimmy's shield is as durable as we saw in the video. How do you think he'll be able to pass this second level? Like I said, I don't really know how both sides would win. Jimmy's lasers wouldn't be fast enough to hit the jets, and the only ones that would be taken down would be with lucky hits. Honestly, if I were to lean to one, I'd say the army. I don't know. G-Man, uh, yeah, from his showings, you'd know he's always one step ahead. I mean, check out the way he fought against the Astro Detainer, and you'd know. Plus, the army might be fighting against a fake version all through, and no one would even notice. In my opinion, G-Man could clear this one due to his strategic planning and battle IQ. So it would come down to whether G-Man could hold his own until he took down all of them. Yeah, it's a durability test, but I'm not sure he could complete this task under normal circumstances. Remember, he couldn't pass the last phase completely, but with his plot armor, it tells a completely different story. Instead of destroying them, he would find a way to run away. Yeah, that's his regular fashion, right? Anyway, Jimmy ran away, meaning he passed the third wanted level. I know it sounds silly right now, but what would happen next? Well, this level is a bit different from the others. Instead of using new weapons, the army would gain knowledge of the specific titan they are fighting. Hmm, Jimmy runs away, and bro, English or Spanish, really? Don't ask me, ask the editor. The army would notice that he's very sensitive to light rays. How would they know this? Well, I guess some of them would have to sacrifice themselves to watch all episodes in the series and perform an analysis as well. Yeah, it sounds funny, but that's the only plausible way, right? Since I don't think the army has hypnotic light ray technology, they would probably use this information to come up with the idea of using a radiation gun. Hmm, a radiation gun? Very smart. And you know the radiation would have similar effects like the rays in the series, and honestly, even better. So, he doesn't pass this, surely. Since Jimmy is a mutant, he would be vulnerable to this ray, and most definitely, in a matter of time, the army would decimate Jimmy and come out victorious. Okay, this level was very dangerous, and let's be honest, even though the Camera Titan and Speaker Titan managed to pass the third level, they wouldn't survive this one. But now, let's see who's next. Before we cover what would happen if all the Titans fought the army together, the let's TV first Titan. The TV Titan. The yes, strongest among let's them. see Could how he would perform. Against the, army. the first two levels would be very easy for him, as he would effortlessly take out the soldiers while taking no damage. In the second level, the TV Titan could use his sword to split the tanks. I already feel bad for the guys inside the tanks. The jets would be a little difficult to cope with due to their speed, but that doesn't mean the TV Titan couldn't stop them. He would be able to split his body and take care of all of them. Although this time he would be damaged, 
he would still complete this level with moderate difficulty. Moving on to the third level, where the army would come with acids, the TV Titan would still manage to hold his own. He would try to use the splitting trick again, but since the army would be in large quantities, that wouldn't really help a lot. Using the kamikaze method, they would create massive explosions and attacks that would surely be dangerous. So, is the TV Titan losing on this level? Well, I'm not so sure, to be honest. The only method I'm seeing the TV Titan survive this one is to teleport to a safer location. For the third level, guys, do you all think that the TV Titan would have to run away from the acids and bombs? My daddy TV would definitely be able to survive multiple hits from this with extreme difficulty, but it's best to reduce damage inflicted. Since he's unable to stop it, the best choice would be to teleport to somewhere safe, and that would actually benefit him. Well, I think if he ran away from the blasts from the Astros, then why not, right? That would be the best thing to do. Yeah, he'd have to use Jimmy's method. Okay, now the army is pissed and goes back to watch the series to find weaknesses. But there's a big problem. No matter how many times they research the TV Titan and his abilities, there isn't really anything to find. This guy hasn't been defeated once since he got upgraded, which means their best bet would be to damage his core fatally. That wouldn't be easy, but with this knowledge, they would most likely be able to do serious damage, and I even believe they would take him out with this strategy. So none of the Titans could defeat the army by themselves. Now let's see how all of them would perform together. But here comes the most important question. Can they defeat the whole army if they work together? Levels 1 and 2 would be nothing new, and they would easily complete them. Although each Titan individually struggled in level 3, that wouldn't be the case this time. Since they are now working together, the number of aircraft wouldn't matter, and they would easily take them out in no time. For the fourth level, the army would use all of the Titans' weaknesses, but nothing would work out as planned. The Titans would have each other's backs and cover each other's weaknesses. With this, they would pass this level, but it doesn't mean they would come out unscathed. This means that the Titans working together would be the only group to reach the fifth level. In this level, the army would use everything at their disposal, not caring at all about collateral damage. I mean, they could even use nuclear bombs. Do all of the Titans stand any chance? Well, kind of. You see, the Titans would have no problems fighting against anything the army throws at them. However, when they launch the nukes, it's game over for the Titans. I mean, this thing is thousands of times more destructive than the acid kamikazes. So yeah, the Titans lose against our army. That was plausible. What do y'all think? The trio Titans are already broken enough. Plus, adding G-Man to the mix kinda helps them a lot. But against nukes and the armies going all out, I don't see them coming out on top. The Titans could try different methods covering each other's blind spots and weaknesses. But it's all fun and games till the army decides to drop multiple nukes. Yeah, it's basically GG when they release nukes. Although some people hinted that the TV Titan could simply teleport. Let's be honest with ourselves, the Titans basically don't know what nukes are. Even though the TV did teleport away with the others, there's only so much he would do with that. I mean, we saw in the recent episodes that it required more TVs to teleport something huge. And in this case, he would have to take not only himself, but three other Titans with him. Yeah, he's not capable of doing such a thing without extreme difficulties. So in conclusion, the Titans are getting cooked when faced against our army. With this, the real world army would defeat all the Titans, even if they all came at once. This shows how powerful humans can be, especially with the nukes. However, check out this video where me and the boys rank the strongest weapon in the entire Ski Beatty fandom. Don't be shy, go check it out.